In life, if you are fortunate enough to have somebody who has done well financially, they are able to leave you an inheritance. That is something that oftentimes people will, will fight over, even though fighting over something is not a good thing. They will fight over what has been, what they believe that they should get or they believe that they should have. And so people are going, they want to have something. They want their mother, their father, their grandmother, or somebody in the family to leave them something. Now, that is nice to be able to leave somebody. If you can leave your, your, your children or your, your son or your daughter or anybody in your family, if you can leave them some books, if you can leave them some money, if you can leave them a house and a car, yes, that is very nice to do. But sometimes in life, we cannot leave people those things. And even if you leave something to somebody like that, it does not mean that they're going to take care of it, right? But there is one thing that I want to cover today in the scriptures. There is one thing that we can leave, one thing that, that, that can change lives, one thing that can save lives, one thing that can change from generation to generation, and that one thing is having a relationship with God and sharing the spiritual things that we have learned and that we have been taught. Amen. So if you can't with me, let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. I'll be reading from chapter 6. We're going to read verse uh, 6 and 7 in the NIV version. And later on, we're going to read a verse in Acts. Verse 6 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. So Moses was explaining to the children of Israel how important it was to follow and to take heed of God's word. Yes. Now, we come to church, we learn. Many of us have studied certain scriptures. If you're fortunate, some of you have learned some scriptures. Mm -hmm. If you're like me, sometimes you don't like to memorize, but memorizing and knowing God's word is key and, and, and is critical. So Moses understood as he was going on, as he was transitioning, he wanted the children to know that you make sure that you put one priority above everything else, and that is following God and keeping his, his commandments. Amen. Now today, we're not under the law, right? We're under grace. Yes. But there's still a place where we are to follow what God's word has said, and also we are to follow what God's commandments say. But he wanted to make sure that they were able to leave that deposit so that they were able to tell their children so that they would not forget who the God was who delivered us out of Egypt. Amen. You see, sometimes in life and in our walk with God, we can get to the place that we begin to forget what all that God has done for us. Amen. You can get to your walk with God and you begin to forget how God saved your soul or maybe how you were addicted to smoking or you were addicted to alcohol or to drugs or to women. And then it was by the power of his Holy Spirit that you accepted his grace. Amen. And when that happened, then you realize. And so we have to remind ourselves of what God has done. And we always have to go back and think how God brought us out from, what God had kept us from, how, how, what, how God has blessed us. Yes. Because let me tell you one thing. Your life might not be perfect, but if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, that's all that you'll ever need. And this legacy that he was leaving was the best thing. Now, the children of Israel, there were a lot of them at this time. As they were in the wilderness, there were a lot. There were thousands, millions. Now, Moses, as their leader, could not leave everybody with something. And yes, Moses could have left everybody with a dollar or maybe five dollars or something, but what is the point of that, right? Right. But Moses knew there was one thing that he could, could leave. He knew there was one thing that was the most important. He knew that there was one thing that would change lives and lineages past him and over him. And that was for them to be in this certain place with God. 
And as I am leaving this place here today, as I am leaving, I pray that in these four years that you were able to grab not necessarily my service, that you are not necessarily able to grab the three points, that maybe that there was something that you picked out. But my prayer is that in this four-year tenure that I've been here, that there was something that you learned about God, that there was something that you learned about the name of Jesus, that there was something that you learned, maybe you learned about prayer, maybe you learned about how the walk through the valley. Maybe you learn how to be strengthened. Maybe you learn that God loved you, that he cared for you. But my prayer is that in this time and in this tenure that you learn something that you can take, just not for you, but you can pass it down to somebody else. Amen. Because we can all leave something. But the spiritual legacy that we leave with others will last much longer. Point number one, I only have two points today. Number one is leave the best. Now Moses was an amazing man. A man who the Bible says that he conversated with God so much. That the Bible says that he talked to God face to face. But obviously you can't talk to God face to face because no man can see his face and live. But he was able to have such a close relationship with him that they were friends, yeah. that they were cool, that they had a common interest. You see, church is not about coming into a building. It's not about coming into a sanctuary or listening to a sermon with three points. Church is about becoming a friend of God. Prayer life is about having and knowing who God is. Prayer is about allowing God to speak to you and you sitting down and allowing God to speak back to you. I don't have that, that many notes today, guys. I'm praying. I'm preaching from my heart. I'm preaching from the Spirit. Amen. You guys know I love my notes, but I'm going off a little bit today, all right? It's all right. Okay, all right. But... What we learn is important. Amen. I remember growing up, my, my grandma, my grandmother was a woman of prayer. She was saved. She got filled with the spirit at five years old. The whole Pentecostal roots runs deep in my family. Fire baptism. I'm baptized by fire. Mother baptized in the spirit. Grandparents baptized in the spirit. Great grandparent baptized in the spirit. They've been able to pass down something from generation to generation. I learned something from my parents. My father was a pastor, and my mother, the pastor's wife, I learned something from them. I learned integrity. I learned what it meant to put whatever you could do, whatever you put, putting your time and your effort into the things of God. I learned that from them. I learned that coming to church was important. I learned that putting God first is important. I pray you guys are getting this today. Amen. I learned that making that sacrifice to God and making the sacrifice for his kingdom was important because at the end of the day, the life that we live is so short. The Bible says that our life is but a vapor. Amen. It goes by that fast. Yes. So our legacy Everything that we do today, and I know sometimes that we get focused on the small things, right? Yeah. And as I preached last week, how our life is like a movie. It's so long, and we get focused on that one little section, that one little scene. But when we're understanding that we're leaving a legacy, we want to make sure that we leave the best. Yeah. And as my son is two years old, as he gets older, I want to train him. I want to show him how to pray. Even now, I try to tell him what church is about and who God is. And so the Bible is true when it says train up a child the way that they should go, yeah. but also with the people that we know, our friends, our co-workers, people that we are around, we have an opportunity to drop a legacy of prayer and knowing who Jesus is in every place in every area of our life. God didn't just place you at your job for you to make money. That's right. God placed you at your job so that you can be a witness of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
This does not mean that you're going to share your faith all the time. This does not mean that you're going to quote scripture to everybody or blast Christian music or gospel music. But what this means is God has placed you there so that you can get involved with other people's lives and spend time with them and pray for them so that they can come to the place to know who Jesus is. Because they need, they need you. They need someone who's going to pray for them. They need someone who's going to speak into their life. They need someone who's going to tell them what all God can do. Amen. Amen. So we have to leave the best. Yes. The best. One time, one time we, I was at a church, one of my old churches, and we had an evangelist who came in. And she told me, come, son, son, come here. I was like, okay. And she asked me, did I pray a certain way? She asked me, did you pray in the spirit? I was like, yeah, yes, I do. I do pray in the spirit. And she was telling me how you should pray this way consistently, and it will show up in, in, in your ministry. And I never forgot that. I never forgot what she showed me. I never forgot what she deposited in me. And so what she told me 10 years later is something that I'm still practicing now. So her two to three minute advice is something that was strong enough to help me to go on. It helped me to go and to be a blessing. So I want to encourage everybody here. It's not about necessarily the time that you have, but it's what you do with the time that God has given you and with that opportunity. Amen. Amen. Because if we take advantage of the opportunity, the lives that can be changed here at Chief Dewaga, the lives that can be changed here in the projects, the lives that can be changed here in Kingfield and Langfield, we have to realize that this church is so much bigger than just this building. Amen. This is a cool building. Mm -hmm. Has a couple issues, like a lot, of, like a lot of places. But you guys are the church. Everyone who is sitting here today is the church. And God will grow and nurture his church when we have the heart and the burden for the community because there are people who are dying. There are people, there are single mothers. There are men who's lost their way. There are businessmen who have lost their way. There is a dying co community who needs to know who Jesus is. And we have the solution. We have the answer. We have the thing that they've been looking for. And we have to leave the best. The best thing that you have is letting someone know who Jesus is. Amen. And the devil will try to do whatever he can to stop you to keep your mouth shut. That's true. He will, he will keep you from saying, okay, you know, God is good. He'll keep you from wanting to pray for people. He will try to eliminate you from doing all these things. But let me tell you, what, who God is, God is greater, and we're going to follow him. We're going to be led by the Spirit. We're going to do these things, and we're going to open our mouths, and we're going to tell people what God has said, and we're going to pray for them and believe that God is going to change their lives. Part number two, what is your spiritual legacy? I want to go to Acts 3 and 6, and we'll wrap this up. Verse 6 says, Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. This is a very interesting scripture. Let me give you guys some background. So Peter and John, they were praying that Christians were, were, were at the temple. Well, they were outside the temple. And they were praying. And a man, they walked by, and there's a man there. Beggar, he's crippled. He's looking for something, right? He needed something. He wanted money, but they had something else. Some people want, might want your money, but God has given you something else. And so they're right there. They're, they're right there. They're right in this place. They're, they're right in this moment. And now God has opened up an opportunity for this man's life to be changed. Yes. You see, people are waiting for their lives to be changed. That's true. Someone you know is waiting for their life to be changed. Mm -hmm. You are the answer. God has sent you to be the answer. God has sent you to be that light that shines in darkness. You are the one who can do it. Not always the pastor, but you are the one. So they were there. 
The man looked up to them. He wanted something. He wanted to receive something. And you know what? We have to be open to when people are talking to us. Let me say this one more time. We have to be open for when people are talking to us. Amen. Amen. The other day, my coworker was talking, and he was telling me he doesn't like being in the elevator alone. So I'm like, okay, explain that for me. And then he started to tell me all these people who were crying out to them, telling him that they were divorced, and the next person said they were, uh, they were terminally ill and everything else. And I'm like, man, God, this guy's getting opportunities. I wish he was a Christian like wow, I could minister to these people on the elevator and pray for them, and, and he's, he's mad and upset. But that's an example right there. People are bringing problems and solutions to you. They're crying. They're telling you their issue. They're saying how things aren't right in their marriage. They're saying how they don't know how they're going to pay all their bills. People are telling you that they don't know what's going on with their boyfriend and their girlfriend. People are telling you that they're taking so many medicines. And so this is the point that we take action as a Christian and begin to leave that legacy, that spiritual legacy that God has put in us and we begin to pray and minister to them because that is what God wants us to do. You might not have money. You might have gold. You might not have gold, but you have Jesus and that's all that you ever need. So what is your legacy? What have you learned? If you've been saved for 10 years, what has God taught you? If you've been saved for 20 or 30 years, what has God taught you to deposit to somebody else? To all my seniors who are in here, you are nearing the stages of your life. This is the time of your life when it is the best for you to start imparting and helping as many people as you can because you don't know how much longer that you have. You can still make a difference. You can still change someone's life. You can still lead someone to Jesus. Every breath that you have, every moment that you have, cherish it and use it because there's a time for everything in life. So take these moments, take these days, and do what God has called you to do. Amen. Are you leaving some of your favorite scriptures that have changed your life? Are you leaving your secrets of how you've learned how to build up a good prayer life? Are you leaving your secrets of what book that you have read that has changed your life? Are you leaving the secrets of how you were able to overcome your drug addiction? How you were able to overcome this divorce? Are you leaving the secrets of how you were able to overcome your years and your battle with sickness? How God got you over that mountain and over that hill? Are you sharing what God has done for you? Because your spiritual legacy is going to last forever. I said this. I, I don't like to repeat stories, you guys, but I'm going to tell you the story again. When my grandmother was on her deathbed, and I knew my grandmother loved the Lord. She loved the Lord a whole lot. I told her, I was like, Grandma, the work that you started is going to continue. Because she's concerned about legacy, because she was concerned about the Lord. And I was the last person in my family to see her that day, and she passed on the next day. Because she was holding on. Because she wanted to make sure that everything was right and everything was okay. So our job is to pass on what God has showed us. It's to pass on what God has taught us. And so that is my heart today that you have learned, that you have been encouraged, that your life has been changed, that you have been strengthened, that you have been transformed, and that God has just started something and God has begun a good work in you, that he will finish it until the day of Christ Jesus. Legacy is important. Because if our life is so short and once we're gone, who are you? Yeah. What have you accomplished? Who have you helped? Who have you mentored? Who have you shot? 
Who have you trained? Who have you assisted? If you haven't done those things yet, maybe now is the time. Amen. Because this is your moment of legacy. Because as Christians, we're not living necessarily for this lifetime, but for the next. Amen. So if we're depositing into somebody, it might seem like it can take a lot of time, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting down with someone, showing them how to interpret a scripture, or showing someone how to pray effectively, or showing someone... Uh, really or telling them or explaining to them really what church is about that that might take some time right yeah but if you're making a deposit for a greater inheritance that is later the time that you're spending with someone right now is going to produce a greater harvest in somebody's life later on Amen. and that harvest is going to determine the legacy that we have and that we leave It's quiet in here today. So when Jesus left his disciples, he, we left them with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, that was the greatest legacy. Mm. The greatest thing that anybody could ever have. Amen. The Bible says these 12 men, 11 men, excuse me, they turned the world upside down. Because of what was left. Yes. 